This is the main drive arbor, drive spur gear, twirly doodaddy bit off of my cement mixer. I got this thing at some auction many, many years ago, and of course, if you've watched our videos long enough, you've seen how we made our entire flower beds using a cement mixer to tumble glass so that it looks like sea glass. Which means that my poor cement mixer would run for 12 hours at a shot without a break, day after day after day. When I first got it, it had some sort of plastic bushings inside this housing and they were torched. I don't know if it's, it's like a kind of half homemade, half bootleg machine. It uses a starter gear and a big car ring gear on the back to, to turn it. So you're already looking at an awful lot of force on some really tiny teeth, which is just never good to begin with. And add years of abuse and neglect and all of what we did to it and so on and so forth. And bad things are, are brewing. But I need the thing and I need it to run for a while smoothly. And I suspect if I can just get this figured out, we'll be good to go. Now you notice on the housing how it's worn right there. So it has been failing. The bushings have been failing and it's been allowing this, this gear to cock crooked. That's been causing unnecessary wear towards the inside edge there. And it has allowed it to move back away from the ring gear. It was getting noisier and noisier and we were close to skipping teeth. These are my handmade oak bushings. And unfortunately, they apparently have been fairly abrasive. I mean, a cement mixer is pretty abrasive anyways, but they, they've been pretty darn abrasive. And you'll notice that they've... That part of the shaft is, is pretty ugly. It's not as bad up front here. A lot more leverage on there. This is, this is where that big pulley is tugging on it. So I, I've messed that up pretty good. I, I, I could have a machine shop make this, but I, I've got no way of duplicating that. And I, I mean, I can make a shaft and I could thread it, but I can't key it. And I know that that pulley will never stay on unless it's keyed. So my thought was, how can I take this and not only come up with something that will support it for a long time, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to run, but uh, maybe can I grab some of this new shaft here? Can I spread some of the wear to the parts that aren't quite so torn up? And this is what I've got to work with. you notice that's pretty darn thin. My, my original thought was brass. There's actually a step in there a stop that stops the bushings from going all the way in and my original thought was to use the school's lathe I don't have a metal lathe use the school's lathe and brass and cut it down I had a brass rod but it wasn't big enough and I thought I had a chunk of aluminum solid aluminum tube um, or rod rather but it, it wasn't big enough either Desperate times, desperate measures. What I did have was this. Scrap out of the old science lab. The tubing itself is brass. Not that I care that much about that. And I think they used it to like, I don't know, water cool their meth or whatnot. So I cut these. The zero fitting's not centered, so I've got a long one and a short one and they're gonna meet right there and my thought is to do a poured lead I got lead and I can make it hot and kinda slurpy and I figured I can pour it into these two molds once and fill them right up to the top once they harden I can press them in. Now, these things are going to hit the steps, but I'll measure the depth of the step right there, and I'll take a hacksaw, an Amish chop saw, and I'll go ahead and nip that off and expose just the lead core, and then I'll use the press and I'll just shove that lead core right past the step. 
Then I believe I can chuck this entire thing right here on this face. I'll have to clean it up with a file because it's kind of crunky, but I, I'll spin this entire thing and I'll core drill it from the end on the lathe at school. I know it'll have a little bit of wobble to it, but like I said, desperate times. So now I'm going to get set up so that I can pour these. I'm just going to pour it right onto the wood just because I don't see why it wouldn't work. That's what I'm going to use as my mold. My crucible is this highly technical soup can I bent up. I gave myself a little pouring spout and a lip for my OSHA approved handle. So we're going to heat up some lead and then bloop, bloop, hopefully manufacturing ourselves some poured lead bearings just like grandpa used to make my lead source today is salvaged shotgun shot if this isn't enough and it should be plenty uh, I've got some other lead from old projects but this should be fine not gonna melt it in the glass case Obviously, that's stupid. I'm gonna melt it in here. Well, we're toasty warm. Let's make some smoke. little over full on that one. That should be okay though. I mean it is only lead. Oh, so unfortunately, I don't have a step twist drill up to three quarters. I've got them, I got up to half inch. No, I got up to three, uh, five eighths is what I got up to. I've got this reamer here, and it's a point seven six zero. You know, I need point seven five. But I measure the, the wood bearings that I was using and they're 7, 8. So this would still be a tighter hole. And the purchase power would be considerably longer. I think it'll be just, just fine. I mean, I have to have some room to get the grease out anyways. These things, as they cooled off, they did loosen up on me once. I'm really worried that I'm just going to push them in there and then they're going to go and, and turn on me. But then they lock solid. I think maybe as the brass cooled down. So I'm hoping that if I go slow with some cooling, I can go through the center of it and the lead will expand, expand and just lock it in tight. So that's what I guess I'm off to do next.
see if I can drill this thing. Kind of the problem with tools in a high school metal shop. They're uh, they're a little beat up. through it. I dug through the school's tooling. And the only three quarter they have doesn't fit in the machine anyway, so oh man. If we get through this without Ripping that right out, I will be amazed. And then what will be my next step? Fill the whole barrel full of lead? Well, let's find out. All right, let's see how bad it is. Pretty bad. things wore out.
Well, here it is. All pressed back together. Not perfect for sure. Way better than it was. If the shaft wasn't so scored up, it'd be a lot nicer. Yeah, if it had been drilled the right size, it'd been a lot nicer. If you weren't trying to turn an entire cement mixer off a starter motor. Bendix drive gear, it'd be a lot nicer. But I guess that'll get us going. I'll go home and reassemble the unit and get some grease in there. See if I can get it tightened up. It's working great. I wanted to make sure I'd taken the time to test it first and I'd forgotten the cameras a few times so it's got I don't know three hours on it four hours on it since I fixed it working like a champ working like a champ